are speaking to Frank Salatella, the writer and director of Blood Night. And Frank, tell us about what the film is about, first of all, and this inspiration. Okay, well, Blood Night is about uh, a killer named Mary Hatchet who murdered her parents as a very young girl and earned the nickname Mary Hatchet. She was locked up in Kings Park Insane Asylum where she was abused for about 20 years before she escaped during some bloody massacre and was murdered by the police outside of the sanitarium. 20 years later, the local townspeople celebrate the night of her death uh, and they call it Blood Night. And it's, it's the night before Halloween, so all the kids get rowdy, they go out, they vandalize, and basically run into the ghost of Mary Hatchet, unfortunately, for them. And what was the inspiration behind the film? The inspiration behind the film was actually the, the Long Island legend of Mary Hatchet. It was a real legend um, that I just grew up hearing about since I was like 10 years old, like an old campfire tale. And the legend was very vague. It left, you know, it basically just said this girl killed her parents, now they call her Mary Hatchet, and there's a ghost. That was pretty much the extent of the legend. Um, so I took that legend and then I, I added a lot of, you know, creative license to it. I incorporated the, uh, the story of Kings Park Psych Center, which is also uh, on Long Island, and it was shut down in the 90s, but it was a 100-year-old asylum, and uh, patients lived there and worked there, and they, they, when they died there, they were buried in mass graves. So I incorporated all those stories together into Blood Night to make one solid story and really give Mary some depth, you know, Mary has some depth. And the film references uh, Return of the Living Dead, at least by, you, uh, you've got 45 Graves. Yeah, there's a 45 Grave track in it, yeah. Um, exactly. Was there much of an inspiration from, like, 80s horror for this film? 100%. I mean, if you, if you grew up in the 80s and you enjoyed all the old, like, you know, video slasher flicks, like, of course, Friday the 13th, Sleepaway Camp, Slum Party Massacre, it, it has that vibe, it has that feel, you know, the sense of kids having fun and you don't know who the killer is and, you know, that sort of aspect, but I wanted to give it a more, it's got a more modern look, you know what I'm saying? So it doesn't look like an old 80s film, but it, it, it feels like it, so it tributes one, and, you know, it, it, it pays homage to a lot of the cliches of the original slashers, which was an intentional move on my behalf. I wanted to stick to the classic slasher formula so that people of our generation, the older generation, will really feel familiar with it and hopefully enjoy it, you know what I mean? Because those are my favorite movies, the old slashes, uh, like that. And, and just incorporating the 45 Grave Trap is, again, just homage to just all the great horror of the 80s, and Return of the Living Dead is one of my favorites. So. And you've got a supporting role from Bill Mosley, of course, yep. genre superstar. Mm -hmm. What was it like working with him? Uh, it was, honestly, it was like a dream come true, because, you know, again, I've been a fan of him for so long, and when uh, when our casting people got in touch with, with his casting people, you know, with his agents and stuff, and he had said that he, you know, they got back to us and said he enjoyed the script and he liked the role, uh, you know, we got him involved, and it was, it was just amazing work with him. He's extremely professional. It's unbelievable what, like a, like, a veteran actor can bring to a set, just in terms of professionalism getting things done in like one or two takes and just and just really knowing the filmmaking process. And he's a great guy. He's just really cool. He's got insight into his character. He's got insight into the filmmaking. And he's just a really cool dude. Very humble, very down to earth. And very happy to be making horror movies on any level, which is great. And we're here at the New York City Horror Festival, of course. Yes. Um, how important are these genre festivals to getting word out about when you can horror uh, to me, they're extremely important because it's great because people that may or may not have heard of your movie, they can come and see it, and you know your movie will screen with other short films, other features, and so it just attracts so many different filmmakers, so many different fans into one place, and then you get to meet the other filmmakers, you get to meet the fans, and it's just the best. There's really nothing, nothing like it, really, you know, because it's like you get to directly interact with the horror community. What's the next four? Uh, I'm gonna take the holidays off, and uh, in January I'm starting to write my next feature, which hopefully will be going to production. Hopefully by the summer I'd like to start shooting if uh, it all goes well. Yeah, you know, it's a horror film, yes. A, li a little more serious than a slasher film, though. Uh, but uh, well, not yet. But I'm gonna start it. Right now it's a pile of notes and drawings and unorganized crap, but. Uh, like I said, after the holidays, I'm going to buckle down and really start writing. Thank you. And this is the Eric Ward Bunnikin reporting from Tribeca Cinemas in Manhattan. And last night at the New York City Park Festival.